Hey everyone, today we're talking about the GTX 960 in 4GB form. So the GTX 960 shipped a while ago. We have a full review on the channel and on the website. And I've described the architecture, I've described the memory subsystem, done the benchmarks. Today we're looking at the 4GB version. This is an EVGA GTX 960 Super SC. It's a super clocked card, ships with higher clocks than the reference design. And it is 4GB equipped, so the stock model ships with two gigabytes of memory and that's what i have in this asus strix 960 which is the one i tested the four gigabyte model against and this is a two gigabyte card so that is more similar to what shipped a few months ago and what we're looking at with the four gigabyte card is strictly one thing here it's will four gigabytes of video memory actually get utilized will it benefit you as a user versus the two gigabyte 960 model that is already out for $210. The four gigabyte model, this EVGA one specifically, is available at about 240, 250, depending on where you look. So it's a price jump of about $30, and we need to know whether that actually gets you anything in gaming. Historically, four gigabyte cards have not necessarily done a whole lot versus their two gigabyte counterparts, and this is because of all kinds of bottlenecks elsewhere in the architecture. And with the 960, the concerns are still present. So we have a 128-bit memory interface on the GTX 960 and even the GK106 predecessor to the GM206, which is what the 960 uses, had a larger memory interface. It had 192 bits. However, NVIDIA, EVGA, everyone will be very quick to tell you that the Maxwell architecture is well optimized for memory. It actually uses a, a lot of memory compression technology, including Delta Color Compression, which compresses about 18% of the memory transactions occurring within the chip and the memory. So uh, this ultimately produces better performance on the GM206 versus the GK106, despite having a smaller memory interface. So it's not all just a numbers game. There's all kinds of compression going on there too. If you look at all the other technological updates in the Maxwell architecture, we end up with about a 25% bandwidth increase and, uh, and memory capabilities and transactions. So overall, it is better than the predecessor despite the numbers being slightly lower. Still, 128 bits, even with the 112-ish gigabytes per second memory bandwidth that the 960 has, the GM206 has, we're not 100% sure on paper whether a 4 gigabyte card will benefit the user. And so that's what we tested. In these tests, in order to make sure we're actually utilizing the memory, what we did was we first measured the video memory consumption of each of the major titles, and I'm only showing a few of them here on this chart, but uh, we did test all of them, and they're all linked in the description below. Uh, the whole article delves into all of this very deeply, including the memory architecture. And games like Assassin's Creed Unity, Far Cry 4, and Battlefield Hardline, somewhat unsurprisingly, use the most video memory, and in theory, should get the most direct benefit from a 4 gigabyte card because they're actually exceeding 2 gigabytes. So one would think that uh, because they're exceeding 2 gigabytes, then a 4 gigabyte card will allow greater frame rates. This isn't always the case, and we'll go into that in a second here. Let's talk about what video memory actually does before looking at the benchmark numbers. Video memory on a video card is GDDR5 memory, and it is significantly faster than DDR3 system memory. It is also located physically on the PCB where the GPU is located, so it doesn't have to transfer uh, over such great distances as we would with DDR3. It also limits some of the interfaces and buses that we have to travel through to communicate between the GPU, the rest of the card subsystems, and the memory. So for this reason, we want to store as much of the game's information on the video card memory as possible. Some of the things that get stored in the video memory would include textures, which if you download mods for Skyrim, you might have 4K resolution textures. Those are definitely being stored in the video memory up to the capacity limits. And this allows the video card to more rapidly transact, fetch that memory, uh, that's containing the textures and displayed on the screen without too much of a frame drop or noticeable jitter in the frame performance. We also store things like shadow maps and normal maps and specular maps, all these different mapping elements that are used artistically in the game to display information with a certain effect. Those are all stored in the video memory and then they're accessed effectively every frame. So that's pretty regularly. Now what happens when we run out of memory on the video card? Well, 
what ends up going on is the system memory and the video card memory must swap with each other. They have to start swapping data and we store only the most frequently accessed files in the video memory or the currently accessed files in the video memory. Everything else goes to system memory. During the swapping, we're forcing the transaction to occur through a PCIe bus and that adds latency, that adds physical travel time to access the system memory. So now we've added uh, latency just to go through the bus, to get to the system memory, to come back, and we're communicating with the CPU during all this and the GPU, and it adds a lot of overhead. So you want to avoid that wherever possible, and you really the only good way to do that is to improve the memory subsystem of the architecture and to improve the capacity of the memory on the video card, which is the one we've done here with the GTX 960 at 4 gigabytes. When the video card begins caching out on the memory, you'll start seeing things like very large and noticeable frame drops in gameplay so you might see a sudden minimum of 9 fps your game sort of just freezes almost out of nowhere and that's when it's fetching dumping and swapping data most likely it could be a million other things as well but if we're talking strictly on the video card side that's sort of what it would be and then we have to wait for it to catch up and refresh everything and we can play at a normal frame rate again but it's not always this simple because everything depends on how the game has been optimized, how the drivers have been optimized, how the video card was built, how the architecture is engineered, how the API like DirectX or Mantle is interacting with all this in between. So there's a million parts to this and it's not as simple as just memory. But strictly for purposes of this benchmark, we're only looking at memory to whatever extent is permissible. Uh, games like Assassin's Creed, Far Cry 4 are very poorly optimized, so we can only get so far with those games. And games like Metro, Last Light, and Grid are extremely well optimized, and that presents other problems, as we discussed in the article linked below. So it's a very interesting problem to benchmark and to sort of scientifically try to try to draw conclusions of system performance. So how does this thing perform? Well, in Assassin's Creed Unity, we see one of the biggest disparities in performance at the 1% and 0.1% lows. And these lows are representative of your effective minimum for the 0.1% and your most noticeable frame drops for 1%. When I say these percentages, what I mean is with 1% low, you're reflecting 1% of the lowest performing frames. So rather than looking at an outlier like minimum, which a lot of sites do, we're looking at something that's more statistically replicable and noticeable to the user. So at 1080p, Assassin's Creed sees a giant jump from the minimums uh, at the 4 gigabyte and 2 gigabyte cards but it's not persistent through all the other games. With Far Cry 4, our gains are much less interesting. The only really massive difference is at 1440p where we see the lows jump 52% using the four gigabyte card, and that actually does become quite noticeable in gameplay. It's a lot less jarring in this fashion. But not all games even are like this. So you have Grid Autosport, you see in this chart, almost no difference whatsoever at any resolution uh, for the performance of four gigabytes versus a two gigabyte card and specifically talking about this EVGA card we're testing they market the device as being better optimized for 4k gaming and better allowing higher textures and higher resolution gaming at 4k so 4k is sort of a buzzword for the card in terms of marketing speak and that's why I'm testing all these games with 4k resolution except for Assassin's Creed which is really far too heavy on the GPU to test at that resolution Metro Last Light is another title that sees effectively zero gain from 4 gigabytes of video memory with the GTX 960 at all resolutions from 1080 to 4K. And so in this instance, it's not worth buying if you're just playing Metro Last Light. We've got City Skylines, a new game that's actually really cool for 4K testing because it is the kind of game you would want to play at 4K. And I say that because you, when you zoom out, you really can see a lot of the game at once. You can fit a lot on the screen and it looks good at a higher resolution. But even so, doesn't change the fact that there's no noticeable gain using a 4 gigabyte card versus a 2 gigabyte card. And then finally, we look at Battlefield Hardline, a new Battlefield title that uses massive amounts of video memory, 4 gigabytes effectively in the test that I was running using a 4 gigabyte card, so it was maxing out the memory. And in Battlefield Hardline, we do see pretty substantial differences between 4K resolutions with the cards. I know this only has average FPS, that's because we couldn't measure it with fraps, it's all explained in the article. Regardless, Big difference with 4K, but still unplayable with 4K even using the 4GB card. That said, if you were to tweak your settings and lower them from ultra down to high or a hybrid of medium high, then you will see an advantage with the 4GB card that is actually playable. Uh, 1080 and 1440, not quite as impressive. 
uh, and, and we do see a bit less gains at these resolutions. Overall, we can look at synthetic tests like 3D Mark, where there's almost no difference. We can look at real world game tests like Grid, where there's almost no difference, or Assassin's Creed, where there's a huge difference. And we're left with a very simple answer. Whether the 4 gigabyte card is worth it for you versus the 2 gigabyte card depends. It entirely depends on what games you're playing and what you hope to do with the video card. Higher resolutions will see a more noticeable gain for different games. And in that respect, if you're playing 1440, you should probably consider a 4 gigabyte solution, whether or not it's the 960, you should be looking at something maybe higher than 2 gigabytes regardless. 4K, you're probably not going to be playing too regularly on the 960. It is possible with some games. It's kind of possible with things like City Skylines, but uh, really nothing like Assassin's Creed Unity. Don't expect to play that at 4K, regardless of the amount of memory on any 960. Beyond this, uh, the 964GB model is $240, so it does enter some of the AMD price territory where uh, there are very competitively priced cards available, and it's not too far away from a 970, so you do need to consider those options, but I will leave that part of the argument up to you. It is up to you to decide whether you want to consider some of the other devices, and we've reviewed almost all of them on the channel at this point. Ultimately, at the end of the day, 4 gigabyte 960 video cards do have a noticeable, substantial advantage in frame rate for some games. That said, other games, either because they use less memory or they're better optimized, will see effectively zero advantage from the memory increase. So keep all these charts in mind when buying the card, determine if it's right for you or not. If you're still confused, leave a comment on our forums. We check those much more regularly than the YouTube comments. Please subscribe if you like this content, it sort of lets us know. We can see how many of you subscribe and like each video, so it lets us know if you like the format or if we should change it up. And thanks for watching, I will see you all next time.